पवार सर फम्युनिकेशन हो जॉइन सर very good very good sir uh, i will start uh, today's program good evening uh, good evening to all today we are here for online webinar on eat your food as a medicine else you will have to eat medicine as your food and our uh, today's esteemed speaker is honorable dr kadar walli sir independent scientist and mysuru and millet man of india on the behalf of our association welcome sir Uh, to uh, this uh, today's webinar uh, today our patron respected dr dedi pawar sir uh, dean uh, faculty of agriculture engineering is also with us welcome sir to this uh, program uh, our alumni association president dr ag pawar sir and all our alumni officials and all our al alumni members is also uh, with us on the behalf of our association and officials welcome to all the um, officials and members to this uh, uh, function uh, sir for our uh, today's uh, speaker information i will brief our association's activity the association of alumni agriculture engineers rahuri was registered in year 1997 so far about uh, 2000 plus engineers have passed out uh, we have organized different activities under our association platform like a get together different seminar different workshop for the benefits of our alumni in year 2018 this association organized golden jubilee alumni uh, alumni get together and celebrate our golden jubilee year of our college and this event was memorable more than 1600 alumni and their family members participated in this 3 uh, days event also during the golden jubilee year celebration we are organize a different seminars workshop series of lectures for benefits of our alumni members this association also help some of the needy alumni uh, financially also uh, help in different disaster management disasters of uh, maharashtra india Uh, then uh, uh, we are also uh, our some of the alumni also give the financial support to our needy students of our college this is the total activities of our association which is specially working for the benefit uh, of our association now i request uh, engineer avinash sabre sahab for uh, introduction of our today's speaker dr kadar walli sir uh sabre sir okay thank you very much good evening everybody uh, am i audible yes yes sir okay yes. Uh, yeah okay uh i welcome uh, dr khader wali on behalf of our alumni association dr anna sahib sindhe college of agriculture engineer mahatma phule agriculture university rahuri uh, dr khader sir who is called as millet man of india and krishi ratna awardi his Uh, right kind of food a simple lifestyle and the right agriculture practices that is all society needs to mend its ways and get itself into top health says dr khader wali a us written scientist who has dedicated his life to build a healthy society after resigning from a lucrative job in mnc dr khader hello 
Yes, sir. Go ahead, sir. Okay. Dr. Khadar, sir. You can hear me. I can. Dr. Khadar, sir, has transformed himself into a healer through food as medicine near yes, Mysore. Sir. Hello. Yes, Hello. Hello. Yeah, go ahead. Hello. We can hear you. We can hear you. Okay. Sir, continue. The sixty-two year old scientist. Yeah, the sixty-two year old. Ah, okay. The 62-year-old scientist is considered the best doctor for extremely complicated situations. There are thousands of diabetics with gangrene, gangrenous legs who consider him a messiah for saving their limbs after they were at go for amputation. There are epileptics who have lost all hope who rush to his residence in the interior of TK layout of deliverance from the various health problems. He has hardly disappointed any of them. This doctor in Desi Khadi does not does no black magic. He instead makes small changes in food choices and minimal medication. This is at minimal cost to the thousands of patients who flock his place and almost ends up delivering miracles. He treats at least hundred patients a day at his residence in TK Layout from Tuesday to Saturday. Dr. Khader did his MSc from Regional College of Education, Mysore, and PhD on steroids at Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. He has worked as a postdoctoral fellow on environmental science at Burton, Oregon, and as a scientist in safety RI for three years. Joining Dupont, he worked for them in India for a year and for four and a half years in the U.S. before settling in Mysore in 1997. Another passion of his is saving the soil for posterity. Dr. Kadar feels it can happen only with the right kind of agriculture practices. He is worried that with the kind of crop practices farmers are adopting, the soil may come and fit grow in the next thirty years. <clears throat> What is the cause of increasing cases of juvenile diabetes, childhood obesity, early puberty, irregular menstrual cycles, polycystic ovaries, infertility, anemia, low milk supply during breastfeeding, and constipation? Diet counselors say it is all because of junk food, chocolates, pizzas, and your love for non-vegetarian foods. Doctor says. we need to start eating positive grains sri dhanya fruits and vegetables palm jaggery and use bull driven oils to stay healthy positive grains are not only nutritious they can be grown in dry, dry land and need only 20 cm of rainfall as high as 60% of the available land in india is dry land so if farmers cultivate positive grains there could be no drought in the next 50 years he reasons Dr Khader grows as many as 38 crop varieties including positive grains at home and uses kaddu chaitanya dravana a microbial liquid for farming in his 8 acres of dry land in bedirennalu in the kabini backwards in hd kote karnataka he even gives a live demonstration on the right agriculture practice at his farm in the name of jungle krishi which is actually the jungle farm his daughter dr sarla a homeopath and my pusha have been partnering dr khader in his cause Finally, doctor says when food is wrong, medicine is of no use. When food is right, medicine is of no need. That's all from my side. Uh, over to Doctor Vikram Karsa. Thank you, Doctor Vikram. Thank you, Doctor Vikram. Thank you, Doctor Vikram. हेलो हेलो डॉक्टर विक्रम कर डॉक्टर कर डॉक्टर कर इज देयर हाँ सर थैंक यू वेरी मच सर थैंक यू सर साबरे साहब फॉर ब्रीफ इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ टुडेज स्पीकर एंड टुडेज सब्जेक्ट इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फ्रॉम अनस्टेबल लाइफ पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू uh now i request our uh, president um, of our association uh, dr ag more sir please give the introductory remark more sir uh well uh, uh, before i welcome and uh, say few words uh, in my introductory speech uh, i would like to wish a very happy prosperous and a very healthy new year 2021 to all the alumni 
of our association and it is my pleasure uh, to welcome dr kadar wali uh, who has been introduced uh, just before and uh, he is such a illustrious personality which we have in this new year and uh, i am also i would like to congratulate uh, really uh, the organizers the organizing secretary for choosing uh, such a important topic which i think uh, is very important so the topic is uh, just now so on behalf of our association it is my pleasure i am very happy to welcome dr kadar ali uh, who is a independent scientist he is also a kushiratna awardee good evening sir and welcome to our uh, alumni association we are extremely happy we are graced by your presence by your uh, i think all our alumni all our members will benefit from your uh, lecture uh, so i welcome you i also welcome dr didi pawar who is a patron of our association and uh, he is a uh, dean and associate dean faculty of agricultural engineering and technology mahatma phule agricultural university i would also like to mention our uh, vice president dr mukund shinde uh, he is actually traveling he wanted to join us maybe hopefully he will join us so uh, he is also a very helpful person and dr shinde and uh, i would like to thank uh, and welcome for today's webinar he has i would also like to welcome of our alumni alumni association and it is my pleasure to welcome all the members of alumni association of dr anna sat chinde college of agricultural engineering for this webinar sir um as uh, the topic says that eat your food as medicine else you will have to eat uh, medicine as your food and as we observe that uh, many people start their uh, day with some kind of medicine and end their day with some kind of medicine and they how many tablets they eat every day uh, that they only know so i think uh, this uh, covid 19 has taught us the importance of health and uh, also the importance of family and the importance of good food uh, many people actually uh, when uh, this lockdown and curfew was imposed they started uh, staying in the home and then we realized the, the real uh, value of food so such a nice topic today we have and i don't want to really take much time uh, just mentioning uh, our health problems as we capital for diabetes already so many uh, crores of millions of people are actually suffering from diabetes heart disease kidney disease and so many other things if we really uh, we uh, such a importance of food now many times it is said that a apple a day will keep the doctor away or even we neglect the fruit uh, like guava one uh, will uh, is also very nutritious food anyway sir i don't want to really take much time but then uh, uh, everybody of us must know what to eat when to eat how to eat i think and if we really take care of our patient yoga and all other things of course 
and millet uh, as uh, sir you may be the university that our university jurisdiction is a drought prone area and uh, some 30 40 years ago we used to grow lot of millets i mean sorghum and bajra and uh, crops like that people used to consume them and uh, i think that time uh, they were very healthy feeling very happy and all but these days now uh, we have changed our food habits we eat a uh, lot of junk food and uh, due to that i think uh, problems particularly the young generation is uh, not uh, very careful about their food and uh, i think because of that many young people also uh, face uh, many health problems so i hope uh, uh, this particular uh, uh, address of dr kader wali will be very useful to us and uh, during this uh, new year to 2021 let us each of the other help us so once again on behalf of the association i welcome you and uh, i thank you really for sparing your such a valuable time and sharing your experiences with us thank you very much sir thank you thank you sir thank you, thank you very much sir more sir uh, for uh, introductory Hello. remark Uh, dr uh, didi power sir our patron is also with us he has also given a total support for organizing such type of the seminars for the benefits of our alumni and he also convey uh, his best wishes for this uh, um, uh, seminar ha tumhala aiko ala ka mi kay yes sir yes sir hmm? now uh, i uh, request uh, our today's expert speaker uh for this uh, uh, today's online webinar on eat your food as a medicine else you will have to eat a medicine as your food dr kadir walli sir now i request uh, our sir please deliver the lecture sir kadir walli sir thank you thank you all thank you very much and it is a pleasure and privilege to speak to this august audience and uh, the uh, kind of uh, activities that you have been uh, involved with uh, your own association and as well as uh, to uh, society at large uh, gives me great uh, privilege uh, for me to be with you people and uh, it's very important uh, at this uh, point of time uh, all of you uh, I, i believe most of you are aged about 60 Uh, as i am also um uh, it is very important uh, for all of us to recognize that uh, all the human race uh, has been uh, misguided misled and being uh, strategically controlled in the last 40 50 years by these western uh, fertilizer companies and pesticide companies in the name of producing food in large quantities for the ballooning population of the human race they have had the important aspect of farmers rights to have the seeds in the hands has been completely stolen by these companies and in the name of science and technology they have been rampaging each and every country on this planet and the government policies have been completely uh, completely uh, uh, displaced by the interests of this big uh, corporate uh, companies and uh, hence in the last 30 40 years the food materials and the food processing has become a corporate activity which is the sad story uh, the food production the food distribution the food quality has all been completely uh, what do what word i want to use is completely out of the window so uh, everything became completely an economic model 
which is absolutely the wrong thing and unscientific thing because the food production, the biological systems of uh, plant kingdom is not going to follow the corporate culture. Uh, they are actually should have been uh, local, regional, seasonal, and uh, healthy uh, diversity of the food materials should have been the scientific way of doing things instead in the name of technology, in the name of uh, corporate uh, culture, the food has become industrial. I hope people understand what I'm trying to communicate. It is because we changed the nature of food through technology, through so-called science, biotechnology, we have completely come away from the natural food materials and all the human race right now, almost 95% of people are eating all unnatural and artificial food, which is actually the sole reason for all the diseases that are going up, up, up without a stop. Hence, the pharmaceutical companies and the allopathic world who are controlling almost everything through various organizations like WTO, WHO, IMF, all these big organizations in the world are controlling the path of the human race with regards to the food, distribution, health, pharmacy. All these companies are actually running under one single umbrella which is actually a dangerous thing that has happened because the farmers all over the world have no rights over the seeds that they are growing. So eventually, the universities, so-called agriculture universities, the technical terms, technical teams have all become directly or indirectly the laborers for this corporate industrial food culture. Hence, the problems are multiplying by decade by decade. So this is the background under which uh, we all should understand what food is and why we are becoming sick. It's not 1%, 2%, 3%. It has been stated by the WHO already that 26% of people on this planet are already diabetic. I do not know how they compute these figures. Uh, I, I am aghast to know that so many people are diabetic. And they also claim that 33% of human race is taking BP tablet. That is to control the tension, hypertension or hypotension. The blood pressure of human body, 38% of people are taking tablets. And this kind of statistics, something which scares the hell out of me. And unluckily, the statistics and the figures keep scaring us more and more because these so-called diseases, chronic diseases, where there is no permanent cure. There is no permanent cure for BP. There is no permanent cure for diabetes. There is no permanent cure for thyroid problems. There is no permanent cure for rheumatism, there is no permanent cure for cancer, HIV, like this, the list goes on and on and on and the number of hospitals decade by decade are increasing, which is actually a true uh, picture of what is going on. It is proof that we have no control over the diseases and it is just the managing of the diseases is wrongly named as healthcare industry. Uh, that is where the troubles are amplifying because we have lost control over food, we have lost control over medicine. So both are gone out of the window because of this industrial food culture and the centralized pharmaceutical operations. So actually these two are the major reasons why human race is not healthy because we have failed to define and show a path for the future generations how to be healthy. Because health is a state of mind, body, and soul to have balance and operate and 
institute our own body and mind and soul in balance. So this is actually in the hands of each individual. So the information how to be healthy has to be passed on to the individuals. This is all the job that the organizations have to do. So how to grow food, how to eat well, how to eat the right food, all this information should have been generated in the last 40, 50 years as the human civilized state furthers into future. Instead, the companies are taking away the right of the farmers to grow the food. The local, regional, seasonal materials, the food materials have disappeared. Apparently, the human race now has been producing only 8 to 10 materials on this planet in large scale. That is soya bean, sweet corn, coffee, tea, milk, sugar, meat, rice and wheat. So all the food on this planet is converted to only to these 10 items. And including the meat, which over a period of time, human race became non-vegetarian. Though in the initial stages of human existence, we were all vegetarians because by nature, our digestive system is designed to be a vegetarian digestive canal. But over a period of millions of years, human race became omnivorous and invited all the troubles. And the present day corona system is a example of what I'm speaking. You can see a small country like England already has crossed one lakh people's death and whose population is not even equal to the population of Karnataka where I live in Mysore. And our Karnataka with 6.8 crores of people have lost only 15,000 for death, if that number is correct. Whereas England, which is 6.5 crores, has already crossed 1 lakh and, and the rampage is still going on with various different strains. This is because just sheer meat eating. So meat eating produces immune-less bodies. The immunity becomes less and less. So if we have chosen to be a vegetarian and eat diversified vegetables, greens, and grains, there would have been no such thing as pandemic at all. And the whole world has chosen to be omnivorous and eating this industrial food. Decade by decade, human race has been losing its immunity, step by step. And all the time, these viruses always gets generated in the meat. In the meat. Some meat or the other. Be it a cat, be it a rat, be it a bird, be it a pig, be it a cow, or be it a, an animal that is there roaming in the jungle also. So when viruses come from one animal to the other animal, and we are also animals, you know, we think we are different, but as far as the physiology is concerned, we are all belonging to this animal kingdom. And we have been judging ourselves wrongly, and now we are producing meat in such large quantities that our environment and global uh, resources have been at risk and uh, danger. It's because of meat production on such large levels. There are almost 10 billion cows on this planet. 10 billion cows, more than the humans. And approximately 6 billion pigs and 100 billion chicken. Uniformly, they all look alike. They all feed the same thing. They all get the chemicals. They all get their steroids injections. And such uniformity breeds a disease. That is the source of all our problems. This human race has to understand properly. We have to 
eat something that releases glucose into our blood slowly and steady. This aspect is not satisfied by the rice and wheat that the human race in the last 40, 50 years has chosen for the convenience of the corporate companies, not for scientific classification or scientific characteristics. You need to give a lot of water to these two grains as our staple food the whole world is right now eating. Approximately 8,000 liters of water is required to grow one kilo of rice. 10,000 liters of water is required for wheat to grow one kilo. After that, you give fertilizers, pesticides, herbicides, and all these chemicals are accumulating as residues and entering the human body. And they are creating havoc. So by nature, rice and wheat does not have the control of glucose release into the blood. So if you eat 100 grams of rice, almost 50 grams of glucose enters your blood stream within short span of half an hour. Wheat, it is worse than that. Within 20 minutes, you release your glucose into the blood. So the excess glucose in the blood, which should have been 5 grams in 5 liters at any given point of time, is 50 grams, 100 grams, sometimes 150 grams because human race is also addicted to a chemical called sugar. The sugar is the last but one product which we should produce in our body, but we are eating them as the initial product. And that is another biggest mistake human race has been doing. And that is the source of losing immunity in the whole body. So the bone marrow is not functioning properly, imbalanced, not able to produce the right antibodies to fight the viruses and bacteria and the small microbes that are pathogenic to our body. So this is the unscientific way of progress of our food system, food materials. So we have not understood what food should have been and we have taken the wrong path. And then we are getting into what is called medicine. And that is also in the form of chemicals, in the form of technology, in the form of operating tables. We have taken another wrong path because we are only managing the sicknesses, not knowing the root cause of the problem. So most of our problems, diabetes, BP, obesity, uh, joint pains, thyroid issues, all these are connected directly to the excess glucose released into the body. And eating meat magnifies the problems because it is the accumulation of the end product glucose excess transformed into glycogen, triglycerides, cholesterol, meat, and fat. So it is not just the final product of the digestive processes. And the transformation of the final product into various things is also done in large quantities. So the accumulation of these things in the blood causing various other diseases. So the cholesterol, the triglycerides, the fat content accumulated in the blood is being deposited in various parts of our system, which raises all diseases in the human system. The proof of what I'm speaking is that even 20, 30 year old boys and girls are getting these so-called lifestyle diseases like diabetes, BP, rheumatism, thyroid problems. So on a single stroke, if we change rice and wheat and eat some other grain, which slowly releases glucose into your blood and maintains the balance of glucose, not allowing to form excess cholesterol, excess triglyceride, excess glycogen, excess fat, excess meat. You will always maintain the right weight in your body, which actually should have been 
65 to 70 kilos maximum for a Indian body. So even if your height of 6.5 feet, your weight should not go beyond 70 kilos if you are a healthy person. But now, five feet people are weighing more than 100 kilos. And this is the sad story of human race. That's because we have chosen the wrong food. Now, let us see how the right food corrects all these problems. Now, if we have some grains which releases glucose slowly and steadily into your bloodstream, for that, God-given mechanism is to interlocate, interwove, interweaving the glucose and fiber in a grain, which is actually arranged in this five millets, which we have worked diligently, which releases glucose slowly and steadily. These five grains, I will tell the names, Kodo millet, foxtail millet, barnyard millet, brown top millet, and little millet. These grains have got 8% to 12.5% of fiber incorporated into the grain along with the carbohydrate. And this is the reason why these five millets release glucose slowly and steadily, eliminating almost all these lifestyle diseases completely from the human body. So the food that we eat should release glucose slowly and steadily into the human body. Next step, all the human metabolic activities create toxic morbid waste. So if you do not remove this morbid waste from your body on a daily basis, you are going to accumulate the disease-causing agents in your body. So the next characteristics of food should be cleaning your body on a daily basis. And that's where this fiber, content of these five millets, 8 to 12.5 percent, 33 to 40 percent of this fiber is water soluble, which is soluble in the blood and goes around collecting all the toxic and morbid waste and eliminates on a daily basis from your blood and other parts of the body. And you see the wonderful arrangement in these grains that you have energy, the slow and steady release of glucose. So if you eat these five grains one after the other on a daily basis in the morning one meal, you will not be hungry till in the evening because the glucose is released slowly and steady. So the energy is always being given to you on quantum basis. So you'll never get tired when you eat this. Whereas if you eat wheat and rice, the glucose is released like a flood into your blood. After half an hour, you are again wanting to eat something or the other. Though your blood is completely filled with glucose. And this is the mistake that happens in our body. So we are fooling ourselves that we are hungry because we have chosen the wrong food. So you keep eating more and pump more glucose. So more toxic and morbid waste. See, this is the problem with the wrong food. This is the qualitative analysis of what is happening present day human body. On top of it, we are eating meat which carries more steroids more chemicals and viruses and causing cancer. The animal protein is actually directly linked to our genetic disorders because the animal protein can disturb our genes. So human race has to understand this point very clearly. Animal protein disturbs our genetic material. Hence, the genetic disorders started appearing step by step over a period of thousands of years in the human body. So the simple thing that the human race has to recognize right now is to educate the whole human race to be a vegetarian eating animal. Simple. 
so these two aspects concentrating on the right grains and educating ourselves to be vegetarians will solve the problems almost permanent but on the contrary we have been involved in creating green revolution pink revolution white revolution all connected to animal protein as our main source of food now the whole world is going to be encouraged and directed and forced to eat more and more meat in the name of protein which is a sad thing because the human body doesn't require more than 6% of protein which is very well supplied the right protein is in the dicotyledons that is dals of various kinds that is tur dal moong dal chana dal rajma beans fenugreek all these wonderful dicotyledons have enough protein in fact they have more protein than any meat all these dicotyledons have got 20 to 32% of protein incorporated in their systems so these misconceptions of protein and glucose sugars have led us to a wrong path where human race is facing enormous number of diseases all are arising from this wrong choice of the foods on top of it we are creating endemics and pandemics on a regular basis sars h1n1 h5n1 junka all these viral infections that are causing havoc in the human race is all because of the wrong choices of the food this as we speak right near my mysore there is now bird flu rampaging all this chicken farms that are available in lakhs and lakhs and lakhs of birds are being culled as we speak but still the government and the industry encourages all of us to eat cook your chicken well and eat it's okay and this is the wrong message that we are spread so we do not need animal protein to be ingested into human body so these three aspects if you understand we can eliminate diseases permanently from human race so you distribute the knowledge you spread the knowledge of the right food and the right food practices we will be safe not corona even if a virus comes 100 times more pathogenic and deadly nothing will happen to human race if we build up our immunity choosing the right foods and right practices so this is in a sense and coming to details coming to details we have been able to heal thousands and thousands and thousands now the there is no end to my uh, followers and uh, patients who have been healed of this diabetic condition and lakhs of people are becoming completely diabetes free gluten free thyroid free autism fact of the disorders like muscular dystrophy sle lupus which is declared you cannot have any cure and you take only steroid tablets forming them as it's as we made them as possibilities and in our uh, indian language we call them siri dhanya dhanya means grains siri means the most important wealth the human race can have is health so if you are healthy you have all the wealth in the world and even if you have 100 kilos of gold you are not a wealthy man instead if you are sick nothing comes to your rest so that's how we have named this 
five grains which give you health from the sickness, from diabetes, from BP, from cancer, from HIV. Hundreds of HIV patients have become HIV negative. Following this food system and food practices, which we have diligently collected and updated into as protocols, which we have uh, been uh, making PDFs and distributing all over the world freely, and which we will uh, share with you, uh, Padmaja, uh, my colleague, she will share all the documents with your organization. You are free to please distribute and everything is meticulously recorded and informed for people for which disease, what kind of food and what kind of kashayams, decoctions. And I have to mention coffee and tea are another two important materials on this planet causing havoc both environmentally and health-wise. See this coffee and tea in the last 40, 50 years has devastated all the forests of the planet, wherever it is, whether it is in the Indies, Brazil, Argentina, or Africa, wherever, India, Western Ghats, Himalayan belt, all these mountainous areas have been deforested and these tea estates and coffee estates have appeared in big corporations, very big corporate companies are making this happen. So the whole world is actually drinking coffee and tea, which is the most unscientific thing that can happen. In fact, we are supposed to be drinking decoctions of various leaves, diversified patterned leaves around us, near and local materials. We should have been healthy and our immune system should have been very strong. By drinking coffee and tea, we are devastating the forests, we are devastating our health and immunity. So if the human race tomorrow onwards for next six months doesn't drink coffee and tea, believe me, all our plants, the forest will come back. If not in six months, in two years. So the whole mountainous areas will be back beaming with life. Now, the mountains and the open spaces of valleys have become deserts. And that is a shame on human race because we are just spoiling the environment for the simple addictions of caffeine, which is a very sad thing. No environmentalist, no scientist, no doctors, no health officials are connecting these things and pointing towards future actions which should have been the right things to do. But because the systems, the policy-making governments, the so-called uh, health industry, all are completely controlled by these food corporations and pharmacy corporations, which are working for their own benefit of increasing their share values and not worrying about the health of the planet or health of the humans. So according to me, in the last 25 years, it has become very clear, crystal clear me, that we all have to shift to local, local, seasonal food items, which are empty numbers, diversified. But these fee five grains and its varieties have been present all over the world. In fact, brown top millet is actually known as American millet. And little millet is actually known as African millet. And foxtail millet has been uh, known as Italian millet. And barnyard millet is actually known as German and Japanese millet. And uh, Little millet is uh, from Africa. And Kodo millet is actually known as Himalayan. Tibet, China, India, all these countries were using from time immemorial. Actually, it goes thousands of years back. Only this irrigation, the building the dams and finding the fertilizers has diverted the attention of human race 
this rice and, and sugar cane, which has stated the plan. So we are finding answers for both the problems of global warming and environmental health and as well as human race health. So we can bring back the planet's health, we can bring back human race health together with one stroke if the human race further into future chooses their staple food as millets and eliminates coffee, tea, sugar production and milk is another disaster, this white revolution. Producing animal meat in a animal, uh, I mean liquid meat. You see, milk is actually nothing but liquid non-vegetarian. And we are producing in such large quantities. India is number one. 26% of India's GDP is dependent upon the milk production. And we are doing it artificially. Each cow is giving milk for nine months. All this biotechnology helping us to create havoc, both in the animal kingdom and on the forest. Such bad things human race has been practicing in the last 50 years in the name of producing food. And we are not showing the focus and attention on the things that are going on. Instead, the scientists, the media, the governments are talking about environmental issues in a very peripheral manner. So it is the food that we are producing in large quantities with greed and unnatural artificial food production is the sole reason for the conditions that the human race and the planet is in today. So the sooner we recognize these problems as they are, the better for the human race for the next coming I mean, generation. I found individual level problems to be solved and we can find solutions for global warming and bigger issues of this planet if we just change our food. So my sincere uh, request to all the people involved in the policy making and the scientists and the doctors, my sincere request is please look into this matter sincerely and let's move ahead to the future with the right planning so that we can save our future generations from this all diseases. There is no need for the human race to be diseased if we have the right food practices and the right way of living, in which I have to mention our ancestors practiced a simple thing called Surya Naskara, that is getting and watching the orange color sun rising and the orange color sun going down into the horizon. These two time periods in Indian continent are essential for human race to be healthy because that's when vitamin D is produced and vitamin D in our body, which is being stored in the liver, which is very important for almost all the biochemical reactions. It is present in calcium metabolism, bone metabolism, immunity, blood synthesis, maintaining the <coughs> many balances. Vitamin D is an essential junction for many of the biochemical reactions. And people, if they follow this Surya Namaskar, if not on a daily basis, at least three to four days in a week, every human being will be healthy to start. So the practices of our ancient rushis and yoga sadhanas are very, very important in keeping the human race very healthy. So adding to our lifestyle, instead of doing wrong things, following the Western thought process and Western practices, we are working in the nights, which is a wrong thing to do because the circadian cycles, the body has to rest in the darkness of the moon. I mean, moonlight is for us to sleep and the sunlight is for us to work. So let's not change that natural thing. Just because you have electricity and light doesn't mean you should go on working all through 24 hours. We are now creating in the industrial world three 
8 hours into 3 24 into 7 we have to work and this kind of policy making is a wrong thing to do so the biological and physiological aspects of our existence have to be respected not just economics of our living the ecology we have to respect so human race has to come from this economic model transit very efficiently and successfully into an ecological model for our future to be healthy and peaceful so let's not concentrate on building more machines and missiles if we want to be peaceful and joyful let's concentrate on growing more forests and millets then we all will be happy and healthy thank you all for listening giving a very nice platform for me to express the findings and this has been going on relentlessly for the last 30 years i just want to share in the closing remarks, this all started for me when I first, as a young boy, a young man, 26 or 27 years of age, I went to America as a postdoctoral fellow, watched a small girl menstruate at the age of six years. And that triggered me to think whether the human race is doing the right thing or wrong thing. And since then, I have been working relentlessly to figure out the alternative way of living properly because we have been led, misled in a wrong way by this Western thought process and Western culture. And it is not Western, Eastern. We need to follow nature. The planet, one thing, West, North and South. Human race is solely responsible for the conditions that we live in today. It is our responsibility to dig ourselves out of these dangerous conditions we have created. So we can win if we change our way of life. And if we continue to do what we are doing right now in the name of science and technology without wisdom, we are going to end up in a disastrous time zone. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you for patient listening. And I need to thank Padmaja, uh, who is the admin of uh, Father's Lifestyle Facebook, who connected both of us, your alumni association and uh, me. And I'm so glad that uh, this is happening. And such an august audience um, giving me time and uh, uh, listening to my few words. Thank you all. Thank you very much. There are a lot of elders. I would like to touch your feet. You are all great uh, sadhakas. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. We uh, could have a session, question and answers. Answer and uh, question and answer session. If anyone have any uh, query regarding this, uh, please ask through chat box or directly. Raise your hand. We'll unmute. Sir, uh, one question. Yeah, I hope Padmaja is also joined the group. Uh, uh, yes, yes. Discussion. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. I joined some of the questions we have taken from the chat box. Both in Hindi and English. Please, Padmaja, have you sent? Just now I sent in the chat. Yes, sir. chat yeah, go ahead, sir. sir. Go ahead, sir. Uh, we'll take uh, one question from chat box. Uh, uh, one of our alumni asked, what is your opinion regarding consumption of cow milk or ghee? Sir, one of our alumni asked okay. one question, what is your opinion regarding consumption of cow milk or ghee? Only, sir. Yeah. I to the milk, milk, milk or the uh, cow is not body because it's animal in a long they cause trouble. And
पद्मजा मैडम आई थिंक सर सर का नेटवर्क प्रॉब्लम है शायद हाँ सर 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 ज्वाइन होंगे एक मिनट वेट करेंगे हम के लिए यस 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 मैम यस मैम नॉन वेजिटेरियन बीन कन्वर्टेड टू वेजिटेरियन सो छाज इज ओके milk is not okay so milk is non vegetarian buttermilk is vegetarian that is the reason why you find in the north even today in gujarat and rajasthan dal bati chas they don't write dal bati doof so this is the way it is so by technical point by physiology it means buttermilk is non vegetarian bean vegetarian milk is non vegetarian egg butter milk butter ghee but milk is for us so for baby cries in the childhood better give the baby coconut milk or ragi or box style millet milk as substitute and we have done in orts given coconut milk and ragi milk in their childhood without giving any animal milk, be it cow's milk or goat milk no milk at all the kids are growing up to be completely disease not even once they have visited a doctor in their 15 years of age and we it's growing up not once they fall sick not even once they had cold or cough not even once they had problems any problem at all so that is the kind of health you can get if you follow vegetarian from the beginning from the birth so we have done lots of experiments like this and we have figured out giving anim that is cows milk the young girls are menstruating at the age of 8 9 10 and even at the age of 5 6 many patients are bringing many kids are being brought to this sickness so that is very very dangerous so you all need to avoid animal milk at any cost and it is not fair the animal the cow gives half not you are that is something which we have to respect because do not protest we are continuing to do the damage that we are doing so milk is not good butter milk is okay if the leftover milk after the calves drink that you can collect and then make butter milk ghee everything oh, but that will not be available in large quantities it will be available in small quantities that's why you eat ghee in small quantities but presently you are getting all the ghee made in industrial way and that's going to cause a lot of troubles for you sir go ahead next question any any any, any other question and i I want to uh, announce that uh, information in the form of PDFs will 
be made available by Padmaja to all the members of your group. Please download. They are available freely. They are there in Hindi. They are there in English. They are there in uh, Kannada, uh, Telugu, uh, Marathi. Also, people are getting ready. So please uh, upload and distribute to everyone that you can. Yeah, just now I shared the PDFs in the chat section. Please look This is wise. Uh, uh, sir, uh, Padmaja, madam, is uh, is already shared the PDF book uh, having a solution for yes. all the health problems. Yes. And the links. Okay. We are uh, 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 also circulate yes. to uh, yes. all our alumni to the uh, through our uh, yes. this, uh, different platforms. So nice of you. So so nice uh, of you. Yes. Yeah, so uh, nice. Any any other, any other question? One member asked about can we have egg. No, no, certainly not. Egg actually is source of many steroidal uh, problems and uh, also animal protein, which is very, very dangerous. In fact, many of the uh, kidney problems, the dialysis, uh, the gout, and the protein uh, leakage, that is albuminuria, all directly connected to in our country. That's how you have dialysis patients numbers increasing day by day, day by day, people are uh, requiring dialysis. It also causes a lot of uh, heart problems. So please do avoid, uh, I know uh, the industry, the media uh, keep advertising the other way around, like uh, Sunday, uh, Monday, Kavo, Ande, all these kinds of catchy advertisements are being uh, thrown at you and at your kids. So you all think eggs are good for you. Absolutely not. They are very, very dangerous. Now, as I speak, I spoke about the chicken farms are rampaged with viral infection. The eggs and the chicken, <laughs> that's, you are digging your own grave. Sir, one of and the this, uh, alumni asked, can we have farms, eggs? They, 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 this is a continuous saga. Yeah, egg is very dangerous, sir. You want to have protein, you just please eat sprouts of mung dal, sprouts of chana dal, sprouts of rajma. You need only a fistful. That's more than enough for your body to be healthy. All that you want from egg and beyond, you will get a fistful of sprouted mung dal. And that will give you the healthy protein. Sir, uh, number of the alumni also given a very good remark regarding this lecture. This lecture is very informative and useful to our day to day life. It is valuable information and we are really uh, in future, we are using this one. Sir, one of uh, alumni asked, sir, what is your opinion on major millet, which are uh, yeah, five, informed, five millets, like a Jawar, uh, Bajra, five, Ragi, etc. Yeah, they are neutral millets and if you are healthy, you can eat them also. But if you are sick with BP, diabetes, cancer, HIV, these great millet, finger millet, proso millet, uh, corn, these things cannot bring you out of the disease. They can maintain your health if you are eating these five grains and now and then you can eat uh, the proso millet, great millet, bajra. Bajra is very good for but condition that is lactating mothers once the baby is born that after the delivery bajra is very good for four to five months it gives wonderful milk for the baby and things like that so they are good for you once in a while once a week you should eat all these five if you are completely healthy but if you are not healthy you are diabetic you are bp patient you are a cancer patient then i would like our patients to restrict only to these five grains. And each and every information is given in detail in the PDFs for each and every diseased condition, like BP, like hormone imbalance, like PCOD, like brain cancer, blood cancer. Every detailed uh, information is given in the form of tables in the PDFs. Please, I request and encourage everyone to use these PDFs in your homes and you can get out of sicknesses in a matter of six months. 
big diseased conditions have been reversed completely. Thousands and thousands of people are getting healthy. Sir, with permission of... And uh, don't forget, su don't forget Surya Namaskara. God, sun God's grace, everyone should have. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, and don't hey, the, 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 the one bad comment I want to pass. Now in India, because of this Western culture, people are drinking and not sleeping in the night. And people are not seeing the sunrise even once in 10 years or 15 years, which is a very sad thing to do. Definitely. Sir, definitely, sir. Sir, uh, we'll take a last question. Uh, Dr. Yes. Sachin Dingre asked this question. Uh, he is our faculty. Uh, since childhood, we have uh, listening that cow milk is another alternative to mother milk. What is your opinion, sir? Actually, it is, uh, it is the coconut milk is in every sense physiologically equivalent to mother's milk. The protein, fat, nutrients, contents, it is the coconut milk which is very much similar to our human mother's milk. And cow's mother's, cow's milk is very rich in steroid content, which is actually is the cause for troubles for the human race. Even our desi cow's milk. And uh, another important difference is the content of calcium is not equivalent to mother's milk. It is much higher and that can cause a lot of problems. But as the kid grows after one year, two years, then you need a lot more calcium than cow's milk. And cow milk cannot give you calcium enough because it can give, calcium can be absorbed only when it becomes buttermilk in our stomach. So the first parts of the milk without being converted to buttermilk just runs away. Whereas sesame seed milk has got 10 times more calcium and 10 times more nutrients. So after one year of age of the baby, you better feed the baby coconut milk, groundnut milk, sesame seed milk. These are the real healthy milk. So I would never want to feed my daughter or my son any animal milk because that's going to cause a lot of immune problems. Autoimmune diseases are appearing in small kids because of this mistake that we are doing. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, Sabri, sir. Sabri, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, conclude. Shall we conclude? Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. Conclude. Conclude. I think more sir, sir, the... ah, okay, 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 okay. Ha, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Kadar, sir. With our request, uh, you have uh, spent uh, your valuable time with us. I think uh, the solutions you have given to us is where that will be very much useful for uh, everybody. <clears throat> uh, I uh, sincerely thanks to Sri Padmaja, madam, who has uh, communicated with you uh, the our event. So once again, I thank you also, Dr. Sri Padmaja, madam, and uh, Dr. Khadar, sir. Uh, over to you, sir, Dr. Vikram, sir. Uh, uh, respected sir, we are very much thankful uh, to Dr. Uh, Khadar Walli, sir. He is a uh, billet man of India for delivering a very nice lecture. Uh, eat your food as a medicine, else you will have to eat a medicine as your food. Very, very true, sir. If we are not uh, thinking in this way, definitely in future we uh, eat a medicine as a food. Sir, your presentation on the above was a very, very timely eye-opener and thorough guidelines to the participant. Thank you very much, sir, for your contribution in the Alumni Association. And I am also looking forward for a long-term collaboration with you, sir. Thank you, thank you very much, sir. I am also thankful to uh, Miss uh, Mrs. Padmaja, madam, 
for uh, kind support for organizing uh, such a wonderful uh, seminar. I am also thankful to our patron and Dean Faculty of Agricultural Engineering, Dr. Didi Pawar, sir, who have given all type of supports and guidance for organizing such a wonderful seminar for the benefits of alumni. I am also thankful to our president, Dr. A.G. More, sir, Vice President, uh, President Dr. M.G. Sinde, sir, for full support and all the guidance regarding the successful organization of uh, this seminar. I am also very, very much thankful to Engineer Avinas Sabre Saab, Organizing sector, uh, Secretary for uh, such a wonderful seminar and introduce Millet Man of India uh, to our alumni. I am also uh, uh, thankful uh, to all our uh, alumni officials, all our senior alumni for contributing uh, continuous guidance for organizing such a wonderful seminar. I am also thankful to all our uh, agricultural faculty members, friends, alumni, family members for joining this seminar. I am also thankful to Dr. Uh, Suryanshi sir is also with us. He is Associate Dean College of Agriculture, Karhad. All the heads of the Department of Agriculture and Agriculture Engineering, one of our uh, senior faculty from CFTRI, Dr. Macha sir is also with us. Uh, then some of of the uh, scientists from different uh, ICR organization. Yes, he was also with us on the behalf of all our alumni association. Um, we are uh, thankful to all these members. I'm also thankful to Dr. S.D. Gorantiwar, sir, and his team, Mr. Mohin Singh Tamboli, uh, who have given such a wonderful Zoom meeting, online Zoom meeting facility for organizing this seminar. I am also thankful to all who have directly or indirectly involved and give the full support for successful organization of this seminar. And on the behalf of Alumni Association, uh, very, very happy and prosperous new year 2021. And uh, with permission of a chair, I declare this seminar is over. Thank you. Thank you very much. And good night to all the Thank participants. You. Good night. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Ashish, sir.